What's going on guys? Alright, so today we're going to be looking at Adobe InDesign. Now InDesign is used for creating magazine layouts or layouts for um, uh, mobile and also for web. But primarily it was created for uh, <coughs> making like magazine and book layouts. So we are going to, this is our new document, so we've opened up, a, opened up InDesign. And within that we've got some cool sizes. So we're going to print. I've selected A4, so I'm going to be running you guys through. Uh, some of the basics right now all right so what we've we got so we've got the width uh, and the height of our page so those are just the a4 measurements uh, we've got uh, pages we've got one page we've got facing pages <coughs> which is if you imagine like a double page spread so particularly if you guys are designing for magazine then you're going to be designing using facing pages because you're going to want to see what those pages look like next to each other if you're just doing a single page then you might take that off um, but we're going to leave it on um, our columns uh, is set to one uh, and then we've below that we've got our margins and our bleed and slug we've also got the column gutter now these are going to be more uh, relevant when we start working on the document itself let's go to create right so here we've got our document opened up so as you can see we've got a nice a4 page we've got our margins set around our page We've got various tools on our left here. So we've got our selection tool, our direct selection tool. So these are the same as what we'd get in like Illustrator. Uh, gap tool, content, type tool. And we're, we're not going to be using all of these. The rectangle frame tool is one that we're definitely going to be using. Um, and the type tool. Across here we've got the properties. So these are the properties of our document. Uh, again, see we've got the repeat of our margins. Uh, this little link is just to say that they're they're uh, connected so all the settings are the same we've got facing pages set one page uh, as you can see we can see the little uh, diagram here or a little icon we can see that those are the facing pages so let's have a look at pages all right so as you can see here we've got a master uh, so let's have a look at our columns all right so if we what are, what are columns let's, let's kind of get a better understanding of that so if we look at this example of a magazine layout here which is from vogue magazine this is a double page spread uh, we've got some elements here so on our right page we've got a image we've got some text happening down here in the corner and then on the left we've got uh, two columns of text so that's these sections here so these are known as columns and then we've got a big bit of center aligned text here okay so creating this in InDesign we would have so if we go back to InDesign then when we set up our page we would create it with uh, two columns so right now it's set to one because it's just one big column uh, but if we wanted to adjust our columns and we go to layout margins and columns and here under columns we would adjust that to two the gutter is the space in between that column so you see if we click up then it increases if we click down then it gets smaller we've got a preview going on so now we can see that we've got two columns we can increase that and increase it even further now just because you have it set to two columns doesn't mean that you can't create more uh, what i would tend to do is if i were going to create a document with uh, two main pieces of text uh, two main columns of text then i'd often create one with four and then just use two of those columns when when creating uh, but just for the purpose of this i'm going to show you guys with two so now we've got two columns set up let's go back to our pages tab Now let's look at how we actually import uh, text and images so back to the rectangle frame tool which we looked at slightly earlier which is F on the keyboard if we wanted to create those say for example if we wanted to recreate uh, what we saw um, on that example then what we had was we've got one box there so as you guys can see x when you see an x in the box then that is 
just telling you that there is nothing within that when you create boxes like this then these need to be uh, associated with something so if I right click on that then we see in content currently it's set to graphic which is an image that we would want to bring in uh, but we can also change that to text or unassigned so we're going to change that to text because we want this to be a text box I'm just going to go to my selection tool and just make that fit in there now if I then right click onto uh, my uh, box then you can see that we've got the option to fill with placeholder text so if we just click onto that then it will automatically fill our it will automatically fill our box with placeholder text which is just to kind of give us an, an idea of what that text would look like within within our document and now with the box selected that we've just put our text into then if we go up to properties um, and we go down to text frame this will allow us to adjust the number of columns that we're working with so if we just click up then you'll see that it will fit nicely into the columns that have been created All right uh, cool if we make a selection so we've gone to our text tool and we're going to select all of our text then we see that we get these uh, options pop up All right so again in properties so we've got paragraph styles character styles uh, appearance and we can change the case these are quick actions uh, change case so if you wanted to make everything uppercase so if you wanted to make everything lower lowercase if we just wanted to fill with placeholder text uh, paragraph style again uh, so we just extend then expanded uh, our options there by clicking on the three dots that we see to see more options or fewer options so if we click onto that as you can see uh, for example here with this word we can see that we've got hyphenation and that is what happens when uh, we've got a long word or InDesign has a long word that can't fit onto the line that it's currently on so it splits the word um, and hyphenates but you've, it's very unlikely that you're going to see this in uh, uh, magazine design so what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the text and we're going to click off of hyphenate under paragraph so click off of that and then it will fit everything into our, uh, our area nicely all right so let's recreate that first the page that was on the right which just had the full which had the image how do we bring in an image in InDesign uh, so it I mean you can drag and drop but the way that we do it is we create a box so as we did previously and anytime you guys see a box with an X like this in it then it is by default assigned to a graphic Right, so like an image so if we click onto that box now we've got that box if we can see uh, if we just right click and then we see do, 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 the content and we see that it's set to graphic it could be text or unassigned we then go up to file place find the image that we want click onto it and we just hit open now as you guys can see uh, this image is very large if we try to resize it then what actually happens is we crop into the image rather than resizing the image itself if we go to our direct selection tool and click onto it then that will allow us to move the image around within it which is again what we don't want to do so what we can do is we can simply with our selection tool we can right click onto our image go to fitting and we can either fill frame con uh, proportionally or fit content proportionally so if we fit content proportionally because it is a uh, landscape image rather than being a portrait image 
then it will fill the content proportionally. So like when we resize in Photoshop and we hold down the shift key to maintain the proportions of the image, that is exactly what it will do. If we double click onto the image itself, so double click, then we see that we get this new bounding box around our image, which is a kind of uh, golden -y sort of color. What that allows us to do is it allows us to resize the image itself. But as you guys can see, if you don't hold down the shift key, then it will distort your image, which is something that we don't want. So if we hold down the shift key, then that will allow us to resize our image in a way that we like. Yeah, we then have a nice uh, completed image within our within our page. Uh, sometimes you may see that the image looks really low quality, but you're sure that you have used a high quality image. Now, if you right click and go to display performance, uh, we've got some settings here. And all that this really is, is if we go to fast display, then uh, we just get a gray a great image or a very low resolution version of it. Typical display just shows you a lower uh, lower resolution version of the image and then high quality display will show you the full resolution of the image. Now all this is about is this about speed you know um, and rather than using um, memory to render out a high, high uh, resolution image uh, it will produce a lower quality image or low resolution image um, just as a kind of preview, but that doesn't mean that when it prints that it will appear like that or if you export it as a PDF that it will appear like that. It will appear at the resolution that the image is uh, previously set to. Another key thing to remember in InDesign is, back to our Pages tab, are these things here which are your master pages. Now with magazines, you may sometimes find that uh, things are always are consistent throughout all of the pages that you create. So for example, you may want uh, the majority of your pages to have a, a, I don't know, red circle. All right, so let's create a red circle. Let's go to our fill color, change that to red, hit okay. All right, so we want our pages all to have a red circle, all right? But if we go to our page here, a red circle, our red circle we're going to create a new page so if we bring down this top page and drop that so as you guys can see first one starts off with one page so if we double click on that that will bring that page back up and then we've got page two and page three they don't have the red circle so this would in essence be our front cover that's the way that it's set up pages two and three they don't have the red circle but we want them all to have the red circle so how do we do that how we do that is by creating by ad adjusting our master page. All right, so let's get rid of these pages here. So again, you can just click on it and delete. Click, drag it down to a little dustbin, delete. So if we double click onto our master page, so this is, uh, these are our two master pages, okay? Uh, what we can do here, anything that we do on this page and we then create a page from the master, then we will see that our pages have that, have what we've changed on them, right? So as you can see, a master, this page was created from the master page, so it now has those on it. Let's drag one of those pages down. So now as we can see, down here, we've got our page that has just been created. So page number two has been created from a master Let's create another page from a master and bring it down so we've got two pages created from our a master if we wanted to then adjust that or move those circles it can't be done if we want to do that we have to go back to our master page and adjust it there anything that we do will then be reflected in the design that was created from those master pages okay and again, anything that we go back and apply following the creation of those master pages will then appear on the subsequent pages that we've created. All right, but then you could go and do 
your designs over the top of those yeah but whatever you do here so for example if we uh you know if we So no matter what we do on those pages, won't make a difference to, for example, the next page that we create following that, because that isn't a master page. But if we were to have done that on the master page, then we would see that consistently throughout any pages that we create from our master page. Okay. So those are just some of the basic features of of Adobe InDesign.